In this video, I'm going to cover how to trace a bitmap specifically in color. Now, I think it's really important to show you not only what Inks Inkscape can do, but just as importantly, what Inkscape can't do very well. So here I've got a picture of Spider-Man, and when I scroll in, we can see that this is pretty fuzzy. This is a low resolution PNG file. It's, it's okay, but we'd like to create a vector from it, which would be infinitely scalable. So first things first, what I'm going to do here is go up to the top, top left, make sure my little arrow button is selected. That's select and transform objects. I've got Spider-Man now selected. And then to trace a bitmap in color, I'm going to go to path and then trace bitmap. From here, I'm going to have two options. I can do single scan, and that's if you want to do a black and white. So I'll just click update and you can see it's black and white. And I can change the brightness cutoff if I wanted to do something a little bit less dark. But I'm not going to be using that in this video. I'm going to go over here to multiple scans and I'm going to select colors. Now the default comes up for me at eight, but I'm actually going to shrink this down to three. So this means there's going to be three passes through the object. When I click update, we can see here there's three colors. And, and if I go to two, we can see there's really just two colors. It's just red and white. So when I go to three, it's red, white, and blue. So this is really important. You don't want to have too many scans, and I'll show you why here in a second. So I'm going to click the Apply button, and that's going to create my vector. Now my vector is not going to look perfect. We can see here there's a gray background on it, and it's also just kind of black, and then there's white, and there's red. So that's the three colors here in the scan. So I'm just going to click Control Z, and I'm going to undo this. And I'm going to try this one more time. Now I'm going to select this Remove Background option, and now when I select Apply, it'll still do the same looking scan, but when I move this off, we can see there's no actual gray background. It's just the three colors. There's no background in here at all. I'm going to delete out the original image, and we can play around with this one now a little bit. I'm going to zoom in, and we can see it's not particularly well defined. And that's one of the big complaints I have about Inkscape. It's not a great vector tool for color vectors. So, I just want to be honest with you because if you're struggling with this, just be aware this is one of the limitations of Inkscape. It does a great job with black and white. They can struggle a little bit with the color. Here we can see the difference in the two and basically what we've said to Inkscape is give us three scans total and when they do three scans, it's like three layers of paint. So we can see all the nuances in the PNG file. They don't show up on a three scan. Now I'm going to delete out the three scan vector and I'm going to go in and I'm going to change this scans now from 3 up to like 30. Now when I click apply, keep your eye down at the very bottom of that little gray bar. When I click apply, we can see it's now tracing 30 scans. So you may think, well, hey, problem solved, right? So here is the actual scan when it's all said and done. It's not ideal. Now I did have this background removed, so I'm going to click control Z and I'll go one more time on that. So this is remove background unselected, 30 scans, and I'll click apply. We can see it's running through the 30 scans again. And now when I've got this, it's not much better. So the problem with this is it's so detailed now, it's having a hard time differentiating between the differences in color. So this is probably not what we would want. It's a pretty cool artifact, mind you, but we can see all the individual little nodes that make up Spider-Man's face, and really it's because of the differences in color. Here's a pretty good example of how the layers work. I have this rocket ship picture selected, and I'm gonna go on the scans piece right down to about five layers. I'm gonna click update, and we can see it looks relatively decent. When I click apply, it's now gonna give me a colorized vector. So I'm just gonna zoom out, drag it down so it's off the grid, and I'm just gonna delete the underlying picture. So now we've got this colorized vector. Now we can tell it's a vector because when I go to the second item down on the menu, Edit Paths by Node, when I click on that and then I hover over anything, we can see little lines are updating. And when I click on it, we can see there's a whole bunch of vector pieces there. Now when I zoom right in, I could actually change the way those vectors look. 
their little node points, right? The little mathematical formulas. Now it's going to get complicated here, so I'm just going to undo that really quickly. So because this is a vectorized layer and I have five scans, there's really five layers inside of this design. So I'm going to click on the picture and I'm actually going to double click on it. And what that does is it activates one of the layers. So I can actually drag if I click on the original layer, I can actually drag this now off and we can see this is like an outline. So this may be, although it's not a great looking vector in that it's not a perfect representation of the original image, this is a way that you can pull off things like silhouettes and interesting art designs. So this is one piece of the vector. When I click Edit Pass by Node, we can see that's just the one layer. So I'm going to click Remove. I'm going to remove that and now I'm going to go back to this image and I'm going to click it and now I'm going to double click it. And what I can see now is I've got a whole nother layer. I can then click it and drag it off and we can see now this is just another color. It's just kind of a chalky color. I can delete that as well. Now we're down to about three layers left and I can click Edit Pass by Node. I can see this is just the red that I'm highlighting. I can then click the image and I can see now it's just highlighted the red and I can actually drag that down as well. So I'm not saying this is a great way to do stuff on purpose, but knowing that this is the way that the layers work, that you can individually grab by double clicking, you can individually isolate different layers and then you can actually drag them off. It is an interesting way that you can isolate different colors inside of a design. So what typically works best for a vector is selecting the least amount of scans in order to have your picture look good enough. So when I click update off of three scans, for example, we can see that's not going to work. The brown layer is just too big. So I need to go to four layers. I click update and we can now see that I've got it relatively okay. You'll notice that the background does not contain the hearts. If I go to five or six or so, then you'll see the hearts will show up. So if I can live without the hearts, I would then do a four scan. If I absolutely must have the hearts, then I would go to five scans. So I'm going to click apply off of five scans and we can see now I've got the actual vector selected and I'm just going to delete the original image. I'm going to bring this back up and now when I scroll over it, we can see this is actually an image that's a vector, but it's a relatively simple vector. There's no shading involved. There's not a lot of complicated picture pieces inside of it. So you can use this now and you could modify it as needed. You could modify the way it looks or you could just delete out individual nodes. Just be aware though, because it's in layers, you can see as I'm hovering over this one, there is actually still a little heart sitting underneath it. It just happens to be white. So you need to be careful if you're modifying these designs. You have multiple layers in play. I hope you found this video helpful. It's a little depressing because Inkscape's color trace bitmap feature does not work as good as the black and whites. However, you, knowing what its limitations are, you can still build decent vectors using Inkscape. And again, this is a tutorial designed for complete beginners. There's all sorts of weird, wild little niches you can do inside of Inkscape. But this is an overall beginner video and I hope you found this helpful. Thanks a lot for watching. And here's another video on how you can supercharge your Inkscape skills.